Welcome to this video demonstration of how to configure the CA database management solutions for DB2 for ZOS on additional DB2 subsystems. In this video, we assume that the configuration has already been completed for at least one subsystem and that the new subsystems to be added are not part of a data sharing group. The process to add additional subsystems comprises three steps. First, specify the products that you want to use on the new subsystems. Next, specify the new subsystems in the Setup Global Pimelab member. Finally, execute the DB2 catalog customization tasks. So let's get started with step one. How to specify which products are to be used on the new subsystems. In the CA products for DB2 for ZOS post install tailoring panel, enter zero settings then enter two products. Hit enter again. In the product selection list, the most recently selected products are pre-selected by default. You can skip this step if you know that the current selection is correct, or use all U to deselect the currently selected products, press enter, then select just those that are required. Hit enter again, and then PF3 back to the post install tailoring panel. We're now ready to proceed with step two, to specify the new subsystems in the Setup Global Palm Live member. Note that the new subsystems to be added must share the same DASD where the product libraries are located. On the post install tailoring panel, select option one, Setup, then option two, Global. Then on the Create Edit Global Palm Live members panel, use the S line command to select the setup members. Now select the specific setup member to which you want to add the new subsystems. Hit enter and proceed through the next two panels. These panels contain global settings and are not subsystem specific. We now arrive at the setup subsystem edit selection panel. Currently just two subsystems are listed. We use the line command I to add a new subsystem, Q10B. Now select the new subsystem and press enter. In the next panel, we specify the global palm line values for this subsystem. This will need to be repeated for each additional subsystem. Note, if you are running DB2 version 12, specify the function and catalog levels. Otherwise, specify the version and mode. Next, we need to specify the location of the vSAM catalog alias and the DB2 load libraries. Note that the DB2 load libraries must be APF authorized. We also need to specify the location of the bootstrap datasets, the DB2 ZPALM library, the DB2 ZPALM member, and your sysadmin user IDs. Proceed through the next three panels, which are populated with default values. You can keep the default values or change them as required. You might want to check with your DB administrator regarding the buffer pools, which are used by the CA product database. Finally, we enter the DDF location for the specified subsystem, for example local, and the subsystem ID for the specified location. The DDF location must be unique and must match the value entered in the location column of the SysIBM locations table. Press enter and use the PF3 key to return to the select DB2 subsystems panel and repeat the process for the next subsystem. The third and final step is to execute the DB2 catalog customization tasks. Before proceeding, note the following important prerequisites. First, the new subsystems to be added and the corresponding PTX manager task must be running on the same LPAR. Also, the customization jobs that are created must be able to access the product libraries. On the post install tailoring panel, select option three, tasks. The Select DB2 Subsystems panel lists all the currently defined DB2 subsystems. We now select the newly added subsystem and press Enter. The Select DB2 Tasks panel shows all of the available DB2 tasks that can be run. There are general and installation related tasks as well as other product related tasks. You can use the V line command to view information about a task for example, the compare DB2 objects task. Now select just the following tasks. Compare DB2 objects, create required DB2 objects, 
find product packages and plans, and grant public access to general services plan. Note that these tasks should be run before any product related tasks. In this video, we assume that no product related tasks are required. Press enter to proceed. A new member is created for each task. The members are named with the subsystem ID and task number. You can change the member names if needed, but if the jobs will be submitted at a remote site or scheduled for submission later, make sure that you retain the numerical order of the suffixes to ensure that the jobs are submitted in the correct order. To proceed with generating the JCLs, press enter. For some jobs, you might be prompted to provide additional information before the JCL is generated. In the Process DB2 Tasks panel, you can browse or edit the generated JCLs. You can use the line command J to submit a task for execution immediately, but always check that a job was completed successfully before submitting the next job. Press PF3 to return to the Select DB2 Tasks panel. The jobs are stored in your CDBA SAMP library. The members that contain the jobs appear in the member column. And here's how the panel looks if the jobs are run for multiple subsystems. Once these jobs have been successfully executed, you can proceed with any required product related tasks. You're then all set to run the installed products on the new subsystems. For more information, go to www.ca.com, select the Products tab and search for CA Database Management for DB2 for ZOS. From there, you can access the product documentation and all of our knowledge base articles. You can also interact with our communities and explore the CA learning paths. Thank you for watching.